Welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles, and this morning we're visiting with Brandon Bell, Metcalf County Extension Agent for Agriculture and Natural Resources. Now, Brandon, you are our resident pumpkin expert. Well, that's that's what I hear. I don't know <laughs> that I would refer to myself as an expert, but uh, I started growing pumpkins myself about 30 years ago, and I'm telling my age there. I started when I was four. No, I, <laughs> I started when uh, when I was in high school uh, in the mid 90s, and 30 years later, here we are. Uh, and I'm still growing pumpkins. Uh, but I also, me having that personal experience on the farm and being ex an extension agent, that, that's allowed me to take what I've learned from growing myself and then take research that, that we do at the college. And I have been fortunate enough to be able to help growers not only in Metcalf and surrounding counties, but uh, throughout the state. Absolutely. And, you know, from talking with you, there's opportunity still. You know, a lot more people grow pumpkins now than when you first started, but there's still opportunities for farmers. A, a lot of people have started growing pumpkins and it seems like it increases every year. Uh, I get new people that call upon me for help every year and I always welcome that because I think there's there's still plenty of, of room for expansion uh, in Kentucky and it is a definitely a, a big cash crop. Uh, not huge in Kentucky. We're, we're small compared to Illinois. Illinois is the number one pumpkin producing state in the nation. Uh, I don't know that we'll ever be at that level, but I think that uh, there's definitely room for expansion. Yeah, and it allows great opportunity. But a lot of times, Brandon, they'll take this pumpkin, throw it out back, and some vines will come up. So people might think that pumpkins are easy to raise, yeah. but that's really not the case. Uh, it, it's not easy. It's not a put the seed in the ground and go to the house until harvest time. Um, they're very susceptible to fungal disease. We've had a lot of, of actually bacteria this year. We had a dry year, you know, f from uh, the first of August till you know middle of September, and you know that's a critical time um, for pumpkins to put on growth and put on size and weight. A pumpkin is 90% water, mm -hmm. and I would have to look back at the mezzanine and see, but my pumpkins got very very little. Uh, rain when it was time for them to be growing from the 1st of August when that uh, that fruit sets on up to the middle of September. So with them being 90% water, if you don't have any rain, you're going to suffer some as far as overall fruit size. So you may notice pumpkins being a little smaller this year. They've actually surprised me and they're not as small as I figured they would be. But you know, you think you've got to go from here to here and 90% of what's in there is water. But you know, this the, the dry weather that we've had, um, there's two sides to it. I didn't have near the disease pressure this year um, that I have had in the past because we didn't have those big rains that uh, come in from the southern states where things like downy mildew overwinter and then travel on those storm systems. Um, it was it was a little bit different of a year as far as disease and that, that actually saved some money because I didn't have to put as many inputs into the disease management. Absolutely, but next year could be completely different. It could so. be <laughs> completely different. It could rain uh, two or three days a week for the entire growing season and you know we have seen that but you know fortunately pumpkins are they're tough. I've grown them in all types of soil. Uh, I've grown them uh, in all kinds of different weather conditions because you know they they say in Kentucky if you don't like the weather today just wait till tomorrow well if you don't like what happened this year wait till next year but you know they they seem to, to do well in, in a lot of different conditions if you put the time and effort into managing disease insects etc Absolutely. And there's a lot of growers out there. And so people, when they're going out and visiting some of these agritourism operations, they're probably buying a local pumpkin. Right. This is a, a great time of year to take a, a, a mini vacation, take a half a day on a Saturday or go after the kids get out of school and go out to one of these places. And, you know, the, the thing about it is, you know, you can go a lot of places and, and buy a pumpkin. Uh, but there, the neat thing about it is, is a lot of places that sell pumpkins also have other opportunities for entertainment, agritourism, et cetera. All right. Well, appreciate the information, Brandon. And if you have questions about raising pumpkins, make sure to contact your local extension office. Thanks for watching and have a great day.